Well, considering that Christmas is right around the corner, I figured it was time to review a Christmas film. And we had a couple come out past a uh, couple weeks, and I finally ended up watching uh, Candy Cane Lane with Eddie Murphy. And it was pretty good. I was very glad I watched it. I was almost deterred, right? I almost didn't watch it because I had saw that he was, you know, I saw the Axel Foley trailer, you know, the new Beverly Hills Cop remake, reboot or whatever he's doing. And I was just kind of like, dang it, you know, it's not, I feel like it's not going to be that good. Probably going to be more race charged and not funny. Like his last film, uh, You People, with that he was in with Jonah Hill earlier in the year. I mean, I, I just didn't like that film, wasn't a fan. And I feel like uh, Beverly Hills Cop is going to fall in that category. So I was kind of nervous. I was like, I don't want to watch this Christmas movie, you know, then, it's, you know, might not be as joyous as I'm thinking. And I was wrong. I was very, very pleasantly surprised at how, how good it was and, you know, pretty kept together it was as a, as a, for a, a good, you know, Christmas story in a sense. But so it follows Eddie Murphy, right? And he's his father. And of course, classic father Christmas nonsense drama where he ends up, you know, getting laid off from his job right before Christmas. And subsequently, his block, the block he lives on, every year they have this competition where they see who has the grandest lights, who has the grandest um, decorations, and whoever wins, whatever, wins like a prize. But this year, they win $100,000. And I forget if it's called Candy Cane Lane or if like the, the block he's on is called Candy Cane Lane, but like still a pretty fun thing that you can do, you know, as a family to try to win $100,000. It's pretty crazy. So... He ends up going to this Christmas shop. Uh, it's called Kringle's. Super random little hole-in-the-wall Christmas shop. And it's ran by Jillian Bell. And uh, she says she's like an elf, right? She's a Christmas elf. And it's like, all right, whatever. A little crazy, but like I'll still buy everything. You're, you're, I want to buy what you're selling regardless, you know? So she sells them this crazy, giant, metal, tin pop-up tree. And it's got the 12 days of Christmas on it, right? 12 rings at the bottom, all the way, all the way to the one. And... Pretty much when he uh, plugs it in, right, and they do the competition, it lights up and it's this crazy spectacle of lights and music and shit and, and spinning and shit. And in the, uh, you know, they practically get into the finals because of it. But in the morning, he realizes that he released all the 12 items of Christmas, right? The partridge, the turtle doves, the fucking geese a lang, maids of milk and lords, the, uh, the rings, all of it is released into the world as actual things, right? Super crazy. And, um, so he has to go uh, back. So he goes back to the Christmas shop and he tries to see like what the heck happened. And he finds out that uh, Jillian Bell, she is an elf, but she's like an excommunicated elf, apparently. Like she got excommunicated from the North Pole because she was like, you know, had an attitude problem. And now she is on Earth um, cursing, you know, people that don't take that take Christmas for granted, pretty much. I mean, I feel like I would be one of those people right about now. I'd definitely be getting turned into a porcelain doll. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then when she curses you, she turns you into a porcelain doll super random right so nick offerman is in it and he plays one of the porcelain dolls and he has like a whole he has like a couple he has like two friends that are also there with him that also got turned into porcelain dolls and a group of carolers played by pentatonic pretty funny um but she pretty much yeah cast its sp uh, spells and cursed these people for you know taking christmas for granted and you know being selfish or whatever on christmas and it's just like damn like it's pretty random and unexpected is like she she's actually like an evil elf right she's like teaching people a lesson and it turns out that when eddie murphy signed his receipt to buy that christmas pop-up tree thing that was him signing his life away in a sense he sold his soul not really but he sold his christmas spirit to this elf right so she tells him you have to pretty much collect the five golden rings before midnight christmas eve christmas eve at midnight or else or at eight o'clock christmas eve or some shit or else you get turned into a porcelain doll so he has to race against time to try to they're trying to find you know all the animals and the rings are like attached to like most of the most of the animals throughout the 12 days and it's just pretty wild like you know like it's it's a very interesting christmas movie and like eddie murphy used to do like his movies used to have messages it used to be uplifting and it used to make you want to do better and that movie definitely was that it definitely showed that you know you need to be you need to be with your family for Christmas. You can't just want to win or, or you want everything to be better. You have to be with the people that you care about, the people that you love. And, you know, some of us, we it's really hard for us to just be, be there and to just slow down and to just take take a minute and take a breath and just see and be thankful and grateful for what we have. And, you know, because we just feel like we're, we're never going to lose it or it's just always going to be there. And, you know, nothing's nothing's guaranteed tomorrow. So you got to be there for your family. Um, and then, you know, so then, of course... 
Santa shows up right near the very end as all the as all the as, as the, the, the everything's going crazy all the all, chaos is ensuing Santa shows up to some to at some to some degree save the day and he's fucking black Santa it's so funny he's David Allen Greer and you know I love I'm a fan of David Allen Greer I love again I love in living color I love all their old skits and shit he probably played Santa once upon a time in the 70s or 80s or whatever <laughs> you know it was it was hilarious but it was just so weird right he's like in a fucking pimp suit and shit and he's like Pepper's name is actually peppermint so he's like peppermint like what are you doing out here you know he doesn't have reindeer he has like this crazy rocket boosted sleigh you know it's just super weird right like it was just super like god damn it it was going good until santa turned out to be a black dude because the santa that's doing the candy cane lane competition is like a normal classic santa <laughs> and then when the real santa comes he's all black and pimped out and no one really does anything no one's like oh my god it's santa because i think they're more or less like this can't be real like this was definitely like a little staged hollywood stunt right like this ain't no real santa but yeah i mean other than that you know it was a good movie i mean i'm not saying that black santa is bad i'm just saying that it was just super random but you definitely got to check it out i mean it's a great fun family film i'm definitely glad i checked it out you know i like i said i i feel like i would probably be a porcelain doll right now but i guess i'm not so i gotta be thankful for that so i would definitely say you check it out and make sure you, you have a you know fantastic christmas be with the people you love and care about and just you know have a have a great and blessed holiday. This has been Ghost in the Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like, share, and subscribe. Candy Cane Lane. Check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Merry early Christmas. It's not Christmas yet. <laughs> Peace.